Back in 2017, a horror anthology by the title of 1031 was released. It featured five segments from five different directors, all Halloween themed, and a wraparound style segment. Combining the talent behind such projects as Bone Jangles, The Barn, Cryptids, and more, 1031 was released to a lot of positivity in the horror community. It was inevitable that a sequel would be highly requested. And now, two years later in 2019, the sequel's here. Let's see how it is. Ten Thirty One Part Two follows the same retro horror anthology style as the first Ten Thirty One, with multiple segments and multiple directors, all taking place around Halloween with a creepy retro style vibe. They brought in some new directors and you know obviously new stories um, that really catch the vibe of the first one, but also introducing something new. The film started with some awesome mock-up trailers that really set the tone for what to expect. Trailers like Treaters featured actress Bianca Alain from Albino Farm and the upcoming Zombinatrix and it was really awesome to see. Uh, one of the trailers was about a Sasquatch driving a truck and killing people with said truck, all while wearing a Confederate flag hat. The trailers were really awesome, they were funny, they were different from each other and showed a really good deal of originality. After the fun trailers, 1031 Part 2 starts up. It begins similar to the original 1031 with our horror host, Malvolia the Queen of Screams, introducing the film like a late night horror TV host a la Elvira. It's short but just the right amount of detail and talking for this kind of thing. The first story we go into follows a babysitter being dropped off by her mom to watch a small boy while the parents go to a Halloween party. The young girl invites her boyfriend over and soon realizes there might be something off with the little boy tonight. Oh yeah, and there's some weird noises coming from the basement. This segment was cool because it felt like a late 80s film that I would have rented as a kid. It started off one way but turned a couple of times into something I really wasn't expecting. The amount of scale for this segment was really impressive given its runtime. It's fun, it's gory, and it's a great way to set off this anthology. Also, make sure to look out for a cameo from Tamara Glenn from Halloween 5 and Freddy's Nightmares. The next story that comes up was very reminiscent of a late 80s, early 90s horror segment you would probably have seen on an episode of The Hitchhiker or Tales from the Dark Side. It features an Uber Lyft style driver taking on one last passenger before he heads home to see his significant other on Halloween. The man is considering suicide, but his new passenger might have some input on that. The film basically follows, for the most part, only two actors, but both actors do a phenomenal job of carrying this segment. The camera work and lighting also do a very good job of conveying the feel they're going for. The segment is a horror segment, but it also managed to touch on a pretty serious topic and really make you think. It's a very good follow-up to the first segment with a completely different feel and look. The third segment is a short segment, but really fun. It feels like a late 70s, early 80s slasher during the heyday of holiday-themed slashers. It follows a couple unearthing remains from an Indian burial ground and an Apache Indian coming back to murder the people in the area using a tomahawk. It's really fun and the acting is really spot on. Like I previously said, it's a short segment but does a lot with what it has. Setting up a great base story and really making you want to see more. Someone start a petition to make this a full length movie stat. The next segment starts out with what seems like your basic hockey mask killer stalking and killing people, but quickly turns on its head. After two people are murdered by the aforementioned Jason-esque hockey mask killer with a machete, the killer heads into the next house, where we see the always fantastic Anastasia Elfman dancing in the kitchen in a nurse costume. The killer is about to go in, but a twist happens that just keeps building to hilarious results. I won't spoil the twist, but it's really fun and unique. The story and idea is great, but the standout in this is Anastasia Elfman's acting. She really, really, really needs to be in more stuff. The last segment is a weird one, but pretty cool. It follows an attractive nun that goes through some really weird stuff. There are some cool practical effects on this one, but it never really grabbed me like the previous segments. It's a good segment, but in my opinion, it's the weakest one of the group. Acting is on point and the camera angles really help set the mood 
but the overall story had me wondering what was going on most of the time. I feel this segment would have did did a lot more if it would have had longer runtime and maybe been like a full length movie. Just the short run runtime doesn't really give it enough time that it deserves. After all of our segments are over, we see the horror host, Malvolia, one more time. It's a short outro, but it's exactly what it needed to be. Overall, I really enjoyed the film. I would say I like it just as much as the first 1031, and that's saying a lot. 1031 Part 2 will definitely be added to my future Halloween watch list, as it's a fun Halloween-themed anthology film that really shines, in part due to the fact that you can see everyone involved really loves this genre. If you're a horror fan or just a fan of Halloween, you'll dig this fun film. Definitely check out 1031 Part 2. Did you not get the dead fight to the after party? Well, it is for deceased members only. <laughs> <laughs>